Do you ever wonder how you can have true fun and isolate the key elements in true fun so you can have more of it? That's what we'll talk about today. Calvin, this is hard data. It'll let you quantify your enjoyment. Hobbes, I thought fun was supposed to be fun. Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Waterston. Last week, we talked about the book, The Power of Fun, How to Feel Alive Again by Katherine Price. Last week, we talked about how to define fun and how to know when you're really having it. This week, we're going to take our knowledge of true fun and use it to build some tools that will help us have more fun more often and figure out what isn't so much fun for us. So Catherine Price says in the book that when we analyze it, we'll want to make it fall inside of this acronym that she calls SPARK, which is make space, pursue passions, attract fun, rebel, and then keep at it. And that will help us move in the direction of fun. It will help us be more fun people who enjoy our lives better. And she said that this is not meant to be drudgery. We're not doing homework. We're not, she's not trying to put another task on you that's not fun. She's trying to help you explore your brain, your enjoyment, so that you can have more fun. And with her plan, you'll be able to identify those things that are more fun. It's not so that every moment is this uproarious time of laughter and fun but that you're getting it in. And when you do have time of fun, it's the real fun that matters the most. She says things that we can look for are laughter, losing track of time, feeling a real sense of letting go or release of stress, and feeling that childlike behavior that you had when you were a kid, where you were just silly and laughing and feeling like yourself. And sometimes... That's hard to get back to, but that's what she's really hoping you will once you follow her plan. So she said the best thing to do is to start writing in a journal about the times when you actually had true fun. Those moments when you felt really alive, were laughing, all those signs of true fun. When were those times happening? What was going on when you felt that way? And of course, she wants you to turn off your phone while you're doing this. She doesn't want you to write it in an electronic device. We'll not get into that fight again. But you should, in her view, get a piece of paper out and start writing this stuff down. What are your most treasured moments of fun that you've had? And so she has some questions in her book that you can review if you decide to read this book about how you can find those times if you're struggling to find that. What were you passionate about as a kid? What did you really enjoy doing? Again, I think a lot of these books talk about remembering back to when you were a kid, because I think as we get to be adults, we get so many filters in our brain about what we like and don't like. And if we can remember back to being a kid, it will help us do better because those were times when we didn't filter ourselves. She said, what were your favorite memories, moments in your life when you felt very alive who were you with? What was present? What were you doing? And try to really come up with this exhaustive list of those times where you remember having that true fun. Basically, any time that you have a good memory, a good experience, that you keep a journal so that you remember how good and how fun it was. And she said that when you start looking at this and you start reviewing those things, if you did something and it actually made you feel drained or tired or just exhausted doing it, those were probably fake fun times. They weren't the true fun times that you're thinking about. I know I played this video game and I played it almost for a decade. And initially it was so much fun and I had so much fun doing it. But I remember towards the end, it was a slog. And I regretted every time I logged into the game. I had to build myself up to it. And when I got done, I was just spent. And that was a sure sign that the game had moved on from being fun into being a slog. And that would be fake fun because I wasn't energized. I wasn't excited. I wasn't looking forward to it. So try in your own list of things that were fun to separate those things out. And then she has you put all those things into a quadrant. 
high energy versus low energy. That's the up and down. Whether it was not that enjoyable on the left and enjoyable on the right. So now you have this quadrant of not enjoyable, enjoyable, high energy, low energy. And the things that were enjoyable and left you feeling excited, relieved, it reduced anxiety. You were just enjoying the moment and you had flow. Those are the things that she's looking for. So now you have separated your list of times that you had, quote, fun and brought them into what was actually true fun. So she says that things that are high energy enjoyable are true fun. The things that are high energy but not that enjoyable are actually sources of stress for us. Things that are low energy and not enjoyable are places where we are bored, despair, or really just bad places. The things that are enjoyable but cause low energy for us are pastimes, hobbies, pleasant things, but not that great. And so now she says you want to go and break that list into smaller subsections, what she calls fun magnets. And those are the things that are going to help you have more fun. And so they involve either activities, people, or settings. When you go through your list, now you have your list of the things that were truly fun to you. Were you with people? Were you with specific people? I have a friend. When I look at my times of true fun, a majority of those times were with her, that we had this great time together. So she is part of my fun magnet. And when I look at the activities, a lot of times they were just silly times driving around in a car. Sometimes they were us going for a hike and finding some amazing critter along our way. Oftentimes that means it was outdoors for me. So I can start taking those things and breaking them into smaller chunks. A lot of times it had to do with playing board games that I've had my true fun. And I can tell you none of those times were me watching TV. When I come down to identifying my truth magnets, this is helping me break them into smaller components. And what's really great about this is if you can do this with other people that you hang out with and then start comparing what your fun magnets are. So if you're married, your spouse, maybe your children, maybe your grandchildren, but what do you all have in common that you all have a great deal of fun having? If it's playing board games, start playing more board games together. If it's getting outside and going hiking, make time to do that. But now, once you sit there and you connect that with other people, now you can find those situations that allow you to have the most fun together. And sometimes these truth magnets are a setting, like being outside, inside. Maybe it's intellectual stimulation, learning something new, being silly. Maybe it's creative. Maybe it's something that is a brand new thing or something that requires imagination for you. And there's some people who love thrill-seeking things like being on roller coasters or a loss of control, like maybe zip lining where it's really scary and nothing you can do about it except go down the zip line. But once you start identifying all those individual magnets, that's where it's going to help you understand the nature of what it is that you find fun. And she said that in the end, when we want to find out what our true fun is, we have to start becoming the architect of our own lives and start designing our lives so that we get more true fun in our lives. And she said that you can give yourself permission to have fun, that you're going to want to make space for fun and fun for other people in your life. Maybe that's a physical space. Maybe you need to set up a craft room. Maybe you have the most fun when you're sitting around with your friends, drinking wine and painting. Then set up a space in your house where you can sit there and paint without worrying about splattering on the floor. So make sure that whatever it is you're meant to do, you have that situation set up for you. Or maybe it even means finding a place, a local community center, or one of these painting places that allows you to paint without having to worry about supplies or mess. So gather your magnets around you and start figuring out how you can have more fun. And the reason she calls them magnets is because magnets attract. So the more fun you start having, the more fun you will have. 
in the other part of the spark where she talks about rebelling, sometimes that means being a little scary and stepping outside your comfort area. You've set up this area. You set up the things that are your magnets of fun. But sometimes it means pushing yourself just a little bit. Maybe if you like public speaking, you go to a moth radio hour with a lot of friends and you enjoy speaking and you enjoy hearing what other people say. Super scary, but could be a lot of fun for everybody. But that's pushing your limits with rebellion. And if it's hard for you and this is difficult to do, that you should keep trying and actually do work towards it. It seems kind of funny to do work to have fun, but we want to make it a priority. We want to keep that journaling going and noticing when those true fun moments actually happen. And she says in the end, be kind to yourself. Fun? Well, it's supposed to be fun. And don't make it such a slog that you realize you're not having fun looking for fun. And be open. Make sure that you experiment and look for new opportunities to have fun. Maybe your true fun is something that you've never done before, and it's time to start doing it. Is curling in your future? Or maybe you want to learn how to do skeet shooting. Go out there and try things out. It was an interesting book to read. Sometimes the middle parts where she talks about why we're not having so much fun in society anymore was a little bit sad. But I think her suggestions for finding out how to have more fun will help a lot. So my challenge to you is to start that list. Start thinking about the most obvious and memorable times when you had true fun. Again, who were you with? What was the environment like? And what were you doing? And see if you can start seeing trends, breaking them down into small fun magnets so that you can start figuring out the next steps to having more fun. And this week's fun entertainment advice comes from Chris Pratt. In Parks and Rec. We could do something off my bucket list. You have a bucket list? Catch winning touchdown at the Super Bowl. Make the most amazing grilled cheese sandwich ever. Win the lottery. Ride a unicycle. Invent something. Fly first class on a plane. When people are walking by, be like this. <laughs> Go skydiving. Outrun a hippo. I'd like to remake the movie Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal where he plays a genie and I'd like to get it right. Teach my son to throw the perfect spiral. Have a son. All right, well, this is what we're doing tonight. Wait, which one? We could change my cell phone plan. That would be fun. No. This one. 800, 900, 1,000. And how much is left in the bank account? $18.04. Whoa, still a lot left over. Okay, you wanted to hold $1,000 cash in your hands? That's super disappointing. 998, 999, 1,000. Yes! Now this is what I imagined. <laughs> Have you ever seen this much cash in your entire life? I just handed it to you. <laughs> nickels. I want nickels. A billion nickels. No, Andy. See, he did it. He had a whole list of his fun magnets, and he was going to go through and enjoy them. Most of them were ill-advised. But a few of them were doable, so he knew where to start. He knew how to just pick one thing and go for it. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please let everyone know that they can learn how to have fun by using small steps. 